talking about pho lao, which is Vietnamese influenced lao pho. To get a better understanding of what that is, I'm going to be sharing a recipe out of James Siaboot's cookbook called Hawker Fair. He's a celebrated Lao Isan chef in Northern California. I've been fortunate enough to meet him a couple of times and dine at his restaurants, one of which is a two-star Michelin restaurant in Oakland called Komi. I highly recommend you pick up his book. I love all of the photos in here and I really enjoyed reading his story. I reached out to James to tell him that I was going to be filming a recipe from the book, so he sent this little clip to inspire all of you home cooks out there to keep on cooking Lao food. Hello, YouTubers. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Christina, for doing, uh, let me contribute to your cooking video demonstration. Um, thank you for picking up the Hawker Fair cookbook. I um, know you're, um, a lot of people might get intimidated with cooking in general, um, especially from cookbooks or from family or through Lao cuisine, something a lot of you are not familiar with. But I um, just want to give you some words of encouragement and advice. Um, following recipes in general, I like to read the recipe through or if you watch a video, watch it a couple of times and setting yourself up for success. Uh, one of them is like, you know, measure all your ingredients, lay it all out, read through the directions, procedures, make sure you have all the tools, and then kind of off you go, don't be intimidated. Um, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of repetition. Even with professionals like myself, I do many things multiple times. It's about, all about the reps, getting comfortable, and be resourceful, have fun. You know, sometimes you gotta make the recipe yours and you know, do it to taste. Get familiar with flavors, ingredients you've never seen before, and again, just um, yeah, have fun with it. Good luck to you, and remember, it's a learning process, so take your time. We're going to start by preparing the broth. If you have a copy of the cookbook, you can follow along with me. Otherwise, the recipe will be written in the description box below. Peel and half one yellow onion. I was actually quite surprised by how easy this broth was to make. It doesn't require any toasting of spices or ingredients. You just toss everything into the pot and let it simmer away for two and a half hours. Star anise is crucial in making pho. It has a sweet licorice flavor with slightly bitter notes. You can find this dried in the spice section in any mainstream grocery store. Galangal is a root that looks very similar to ginger. It has a sharp citrusy flavor kind of piney, kind of earthy. The recipe calls for cilantro root, which isn't very easy to find. Fortunately, you can also use the stems. Now to start the foundation of the broth, which is brisket and beef neck bones. James states that broth made solely of bones lacks depth. Flavor comes from protein, especially the tougher cuts of meat. I have two pounds of brisket and cutting into one half inch cubes. Since we aren't skimming the broth, I'm rinsing the neck bones and putting them directly into the pot along with the cubed brisket. Add one and a half gallons of water Drop in the aromatics. We're using galangal, star anise, and cilantro roots. We're going to be seasoning the broth with fish sauce, light thin soy sauce, and black soy sauce, which will give it that deep caramelly brown color. As always, you can find the measurements in the description box below. Got my husband working on the dark soy sauce. Just getting the salt in here. Need one and a half tablespoons. Bring the water to a boil on a high heat. Then we're going to lower it and maintain a gentle simmer. While the broth is simmering, we can prepare the garnishes, condiments, and sides. We have bean sprouts, Thai chilies, long beans, green onion, cilantro, lime, Chinese celery. I've actually never used this. It's a lot slimmer than regular celery and Thai basil. Wash and strain all of your garnishes and sides. 
chop the scallions, Chinese celery, and cilantro. Cut the long bean into six inch pieces. We like to have this on the side with gabi, otherwise known as shrimp paste. Slice the lime into wedges. Garnishes and sides can be prepared the night before. Just make sure that you put it in an airtight container with a napkin on top to soak up any moisture. Once you're ready to serve, go ahead and put it on plates or a platter. That way everyone can garnish as they please. My favorite beef meatballs are from Texas. These are the ones from Vin Huang. I don't know of another way to get these because my friends bring them back by the cooler full. James's recipe calls for meatballs with tendon. Just gonna slice these up since they are a bit larger. I'm also using meatballs without tendon for my husband. Thinly slice the sirloin. I find that placing this in the freezer for about 45 minutes to an hour helps to firm it up so that you can easily slice. I'm using dried rice stick noodles by Three Ladies per James's recommendation. Of course, if you have fresh rice noodles available to you, you can use those as well. If you are using the dried rice noodles, make sure that you follow the instructions on the back. The Three Ladies ones required an hour of soaking time and I barely got them soaked before the broth was done. This is how things are looking two hours in. In the cookbook, James says, don't skim impurities from the surface. They are protein from the blood, marrow, and juices, all of which contribute flavor. At this point, the cookbook states that the brisket should be somewhat tender and the meat should be fairly easy to pick off from the neck bones. Now we can add the meatballs and reduce the broth to a gentle simmer. I decided to remove the neck bones to take some of the meat off. I am going to put the bones and the meat back into the pot once I've done that. To cook the noodles, bring a medium pot of water to a boil. Place a fistful of noodles into a strainer to blanch. You can give it a quick stir to make sure the water is covering it. This should only take about five seconds. Once it's done, shake off any excess water and add to a bowl. Optional to blanch the sirloin separately or place directly into your bowl. Because the broth was on a gentle simmer, it should immediately cook the sirloin. Cover the noodles with as much broth as you would like, scooping up the meatballs and any meat that's fallen to the bottom. You can also remove the brisket and the meat from the neck bones to serve on the side as I'm doing here. I seriously wish you guys could smell this. Now you can garnish and season to your heart's content. I chuckled when I read the part in James's cookbook about how he's never seen a dish modified so many times once it's hit the table. This is truly a dish that you can adjust to taste or make based on how you feel that day, which is honestly how I treat all of my meals. If you couldn't tell, Laotians love their condiments. The last thing you'll need is kapit, which is shrimp paste. We like to serve this alongside pho to dip our chilies, celery, long beans, whatever veggies you have on hand. It adds a nice umami crunch. Now you can mix and enjoy. Thank you to James for sharing this recipe. I hope you guys give it a try. If you are remaking it, please tag us. We'd love to see the pictures and hear what you think. Like two o'clock, we are finally just sitting down to have our first meal. Usually when I'm filming, we can't use the kitchen at all because I don't like to make a mess. Clean everything up and then just film. Bon appetit. Got a big pot of 